Hello and welcome to the Rams pregame show delivered by Little Caesars, the official pizza of the Los Angeles Rams. It's week 16, it's Thursday night football, it's prime time on the playoff bubble. Welcome to SoFi Stadium here in Inglewood. I'm JB along with my friends and colleagues, DeMarco Farr and Ricky Hollywood. Erica, who is normally the biggest celebrity in the building on Rams game day. But today I hear Shohei Otani is going to be here, so you're going to have to take... A back seat, Ricky. I, I'll take that today um, of all days. Last Thursday night, I wore leather pants, DeMarco, as I you know. Yeah. I didn't this this week because, you know, I'm just feeling the black, the black, the black. regular pants, yeah, not yeah. leather. But tonight, it's got the same vibe. The lucky the same leather. Plus, it's been pouring outside. Yeah, it's so, yeah. it's so gross. And on a rainy day in L.A., how lucky are we to have the world's greatest the umbrella here at SoFi Stadium? The Thank best. you, Mr. Stan Kroenke. All right, we've got a lot to cover as we count down to kickoff. I think we got to start with the atmosphere, though, right? Oh, yeah. Seems like every time the Saints and the Rams lock up, there's something on the line. DeMarco, we've had some big games against the oh, Saints. Yeah. You've played in some big games against the Saints. How about tonight? I can't stand the Saints. I can't stand playing the Saints. But, no, you can smell it. You can feel it. The electricity's in the air. This is a big football game. Both teams need a win. This is do or die for both squads. I mean, there's only one room at the top for one, and somebody's going to leave here with, with their playoff hopes going bye-bye. So I hope it's the Rams bringing their A game against the Saints. You know the Saints are going to come to play, so this will be a slobber knocker of an affair today. Yeah, both teams 7-7. Seven and seven. If the Saints win out, they will win their division and host a playoff game. If the Rams win out, they're going to get a wild card spot, Erica. What are you expecting from tonight? I mean, it's going to be electric no matter what. When you have stakes of this high, with these teams, uh -huh. with the history that they have together, it is going to be amazing under the lights tonight. I, I liked when uh, a few players this week, including Matthew Stafford, were asked, is this the closest thing you can get to a, a playoff game in December? Says, yeah, I guess if a playoff game occurs three and a half days after your previous game. Yeah. That's crazy. A win over the Commanders here on right. Sunday. Yeah. But I think it does play in the Rams' favor, though, in terms of being home and playing so well. I think they've earned it, man. I mean, offensively, defensively, you've earned the right to play on national TV for, for the right to move on or to keep your playoff hopes alive. So, look, I think they've been in search of their best game. I think they're close. Hopefully, we'll see it tonight. No, that's a good point. They haven't been in prime time since week three in Cincinnati. That was like a shared Monday night football affair. This is the only time the Rams at home will be on the national spotlight. Are they ready for their close-up? Absolutely. The offense has been really gelling together. Matthew Stafford, since the bye, has been on fire. You have Kyron Williams hitting almost 1,000 yards. He, he should tonight. He's at 900-something. Um, and it's just amazing when you have everyone coming together right at this time and the defense i mean i'm talking taking the whole show yeah, yeah. we can talk about every aspect of this team right now they've just been crushing it so to see it come all together tonight it really feels like right now is the moment all right you touched on how well the offense has been playing since their bye, since the return of kyron williams on the short list of the greatest offenses in the national football league They've won four of five with that only loss being in overtime at Baltimore. Let's start with Kyron Williams and his impact, really, across the entire offense, not just in the running game. Uh, contact balance? Is that, that what Sean, is that what Sean McVay says about him? I mean, I think he is a tougher runner. I think his yards after contact has told the story about Kyron Williams. Really changed the perception of Kyron Williams. We thought he was a pass catcher, a third down back. No, he's more physical than that. He's tough around the goal line. He breaks tackles. And look, they're running it. When they know you're running it and having success, that means that guy and that offensive line are doing a pretty good job. So I think whatever Kyron does today, he has to get off and have a great game. If not, puts a lot of pressure on the quarterback. I think it's fair to make the case best running game Matthew Stafford has ever played with. Yeah. As well as he's throwing the football. I mean, that that sets up beautifully for Stafford at this stage in his career, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you talk about complimentary football is something that this team has been working towards for a long time this season. And with Kyron gone for the four games, to have him come back and not miss a beat like that and continue to progress, yeah. it has been amazing to watch Stafford. And you just talk about the physicality of yeah. him and also what that allows the other players on the offense to do while he is taking the brunt of some of those runs. I mean, it really sets them up for success. And Kyron's got great hair, doesn't he? Great hair. Got, see, great hair. Great I know, hair. I know. Best running back I'm, I'm racking my brain to Detroit he's the first running yeah. back to have back-to-back 100 -back yard games in Matthew Stafford's career his entire really? career see this guy doesn't get enough credit see he did all this without a running back it's nice to have a running game to like help out Matthew Stafford all right so let's talk about QB1 yeah. then the controlled swagger that he's been playing with since the bye since coming back from his thumb injury man he's old school I, I asked Bri uh, Brian Allen about him like what is it about Matthew Stafford that you like he said he's a throwback he's a guy that plays through pain and he forces others to play through pain. I mean, the guy is, like you said, he gets bisected, stitches himself together, and 
trots onto the field. So if you've got a boo-boo and you want to come out and your quarterback goes back in, you got to go. So he drives the football team. And I think his thumb has come around. He's starting to whip the football all around the yard. So as long as he feels better, I think this offense is going to be great. How adorable was that mic'd up moment before the Commanders it. game? Oh my God. Daddy, don't get tackled. Goes, I think that's uh, a He shrugs it off. He goes, all right. Good game plan for tonight, though, right? Would Absolutely. you say? The less he gets tackled, the better? Absolutely, especially against the Saints front. I think that the, oh, yeah. the O-line really needs to stick up, uh, stand up and protect him. But I think that was so, that was poetic. Hey, Daddy, don't get tackled. He, and he shrugs. He goes, he goes uh, all right. How do you just, keep that promise in yeah. a professional football oh, game? Amazing. <laughs> Speaking of poetic, the NFL schedule makers know what they're doing, don't yeah. they? Derek Carr back at SoFi Stadium for a Thursday night in December. What comes to mind? Uh, I, 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 no, oh, that's not it. Oh, yeah, right. Forgot about that. <laughs> Different team, and yeah. he is coming off his best game oh, yeah. as a Saint, and he gets Chris Olave back tonight. Oh, look, look, Carr is tremendous. He looks like he is in such a rhythm, had a great game last week. It's all pitch and catch. He's getting the ball out on time to the right guys in a place where they can do something with it. So it's up for the Rams defense. When you're talking about pass rush and needing a pass rush, you're going to need it today to knock him off his rhythm. He distributed the football to 10 different receivers in a win over the Giants last week, but their 7-7 seven and seven is not the Rams' 7-7. Seven and seven. The, the strength of schedule has not been there for the Saints, but none of that matters. It just wins from this point forward, and I think he's got his best arsenal of weapons available to him tonight. For a car, you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. To have Chris Olave back is huge. You have Alvin Kamara, who is a lights-out performer on the yeah. field, and to have him start to really cook like he did last week, I would cook car. I'm like, yeah. look at all this alliteration, you know. <laughs> but he, he, it really is coming together at the right time. But I think it's the perfect time for this Rams defense to really show what everyone's been talking no, about no. week after week. Alvin Kamara's that guy you hate to play against, but you wish you had him. You know what I mean? You wish you had him on your squad. He yeah. eats airheads a lot before every Does game. Does he really? Seen it? You see, he eats a lot of airheads. My type of guy. Tonight, he's sure. very likely going to become yeah. the first NFL back with 500 receptions in tonight, his 100th career game. Wow. And then this weekend, Christian McCaffrey will join him. So that's the kind of test the Rams yeah. are up against tonight. That's the elite company. That's that type of two-way back that can impact it with uh, the running game or through the air. I mean, we haven't had a, a, a good time against Alvin Kamara. It's always been a problem or... He's gotten by you. So look, Played well, yeah. linebackers, safeties, defensive line, it takes all 11. you got to get 11 bodies on Alvin Kamara every time he touches the rock. What about, we talked about the quarterbacks, what about the, uh, the dueling pass rushes? The Saints really struggled in that regard, but their last two games have been their best getting to quarterbacks. Meantime, the Rams only three sacks in their last two games. What do you make of that? I think that's been the issue. I mean, especially when Aaron Donald is off the field. I mean, there's just no pass rush. And sometimes when they do send two or three guys at him, no one else is winning a one-on-one. -on -one. So Byron Young, he was a guy, like you said, I think you sent me 48 pressures, leaves all rookie edge guys. Yes. I like pressures. I love sacks. So you got to take that pressure, turn it into a sack. And somebody else, Michael Hoyt, Kobe Turner, somebody else has to win on one-on-one -on -one and help out Aaron Donald and get pressure on the There is an element of that. Cam Jordan yeah. for the Saints, Aaron Donald for the Rams, surefire Hall of Famers. Yeah. They're both getting the pressure that they typically do but they haven't been converted into well, impact plays and sacks as much as we're used to. Of course, but we're also talking in these last two games, Lamar Jackson, this is Derek Carr. So hopefully yeah. those numbers can get back to, to where they should be. It is impossible to tackle Lamar Jackson. Okay, so fair. Like you so, play ring around the rosy right, with Lamar only, Jackson, he gets out. You run around for so you long. You put Derek Carr in the spin cycle, chances right. are that's going to go in your yeah. favor. Right. Sam Howell got out too now. Yeah. <laughs> he Sam got Howell out. got out too. He got out a few times. Oh, you yeah. know, the Saints are also down what they project to be their two starting tackles coming into this season. So maybe that helps Byron yeah. in the edge rush. And conversely, getting Rob Havenstein back for the Rams yeah. should fortify the right tackle position and really the right side of that line. I think to help against the pass rush from the Saints, you go back to what we talked about in the first part of the show, Kyron Williams. Run the football, keep them on their heels, don't let them pin their ears back. There is an element of that. It's a yeah. short week. We're deep in the season. Yeah. As well as Matthew Stafford is playing, as much as he and Sean McVay are making defenses defeat, defend every blade of grass, this could be a willpower game. This could be a how much do you want to tackle someone 30, 35, 40 times. I want Sean McVay to be bored on the sideline. Like every time I call a run, it pops for 20. So I'm let Kyron get all the, the alkalis and you be bored. When he has to go into the bag, that's what makes me nervous. Earmuffs, Ricky. Yeah. Remember yeah. Cam Akers and Sean McVay in the Rams against Bill Belichick and the Patriots I, here I, I in do. prime time? I that do. game plan, <laughs> yeah. that could play here too. I remember that too. I do. It, it really yes. could. But how about this dynamic trio of Kyron? Of Puka, mm. of Cup, who's oh, really come oh, on of late. Cup? I was just, I was just realizing it shouldn't be a trio. It should be a, a quad, 
Right. Because Demarcus yeah. Robinson is is right there with the him. last three games. Yeah, it's it's been amazing. And and JB even even you know Davis Allen getting involved. I loved listening to you talk with him about that audible that they've never even practiced together. And the the stuff that that Matthew Stafford can do with the offensive weapons that he has is amazing to watch. The secondary tonight will be interesting to me, going in both directions. Uh, the Rams had some secondary breakdowns last week, certainly in Baltimore. The explosive passing plays have been nagging of late. Meantime, I think the Saints secondary could give the Rams some trouble. They play sticky man coverage. They have linebackers who can cover up the seams. That's different than what the Rams have been exploiting lately. Okay, tell me this in football, right? When you're not a high-sacking team, they don't have a bunch of sacks. They have, what, double-digit takeaways, but not a ton. How are they getting off the field on third down? They've been phenomenal on third down. Knocking the ball down. They are tight in cover. Yeah, they, they, they cause problems. They are so well coached. So it is incumbent upon Matthew Stafford and receivers to be accurate with the football and catch secure, pick up the first down, turn up field. So, But this Saints defense, they're going to make you run a solemn course just to pick up a Well, how about down. that last yeah. point? Get up field after you make the catch. Yeah. If, if you're going to play that type of coverage, you're also leaving the door open to yards after catch, are you If not? you break a tackle, we said this, and uh, this is funny. I was going to ask her this. Who do you like better, Cup or Puka? Be honest. I, I can't. Come on. you got to pick one. I think I, you're a Puka fan. I love Puka. See, I told I you. I love him. But that's the guy. On that, those little outs, you turn up, you break the tackle of a corner, you get going. Cooper Cup, same thing. Demarcus Robinson in the red zone. They give you a hitch, make the corner miss. You're a big guy getting to the end zone. That's got to happen. You got 2-2 back as well. That helps. That certainly yeah. helps the explosive passing game. And also, if you see a man look, you hit him with the jet sweep. Next thing you know, you're out the gate around the corner. No so, doubt. Sean McVay has plenty of answers in his arsenal. I just can't wait to see how they get to them. All right. Are we ready for our Pizza Pizza Keys to the game? Bring it. Yes, sir. DeMarco, I have you first on the list. Uh, get your thinking caps on defensively. Here's the funny thing about Carr, right? He's got the easiest job in the National Football League. He only has to play 70% of the time because the other time, it's Taysom Hill. And when Taysom Hill comes into the game, the entire offense changes, and you have to change with it defensively, not just personnel, mentally. How to stop Taysom, Taysom Hill, how to get after Carr. So have your thinking caps on defensively today. Rams have done a pretty good job against Taysom Hill in their previous matchups, but I think you're right to point that out. He is the ultimate X factor. And, and to piggyback on that, I had some, something similar. You need to contain the run, and that's hard to say when it's Alvin Kamara, but then when you have Taysom Hill checking in, who is a big threat in the run game as well, if he's playing quarterback, tight end, or whatever he checks in as depending on the day, it is making sure that the Rams are keeping things in front of them. All right, for my pizza pizza key to the game, I'll go with starting drives and completing them. Mm. The Saints make a living, especially last week against the Giants, getting off the field three and out, right? They have so many drives this year where they don't even give up a first down. The Rams have been good in the red zone all season. The Saints have been great the last couple of weeks in the red zone. So can you start a drive and can you finish it with a touchdown rather than a field goal? We've seen two instances in the last two weeks where the Rams have marched down the field with their running game, then got pass happy on a short field in the red zone and had to settle for three. What will they do when they get into that first and goal for the first time tonight? Run the ball, Sean. Run the ball, Sean. You're just playing to the comments. Run section. the ball, Sean. <laughs> you know what you're doing. That'll wrap it up for our Rams pregame show, delivered by Little Caesars. We'd like to tell you that starting December 26, you can head into Little Caesars. Whoa. And while supplies last, hey. you can get a Rams souvenir Whoa. cup when you order a stuffed crazy crust pepperoni pizza, wow. crazy combo, yeah. and two liter Pepsi in store for a limited time. DeMarco's going to take it all. Of course I A pregame meal delivered by Rampage and Sir Caesar. I'm the biggest guy here. Come on now. <laughs> no? <laughs> Thank you for joining us, both in person Thank you. and online. Kickoff 515 on Prime Video and also locally on Fox 11. You can catch our radio broadcast on ESPN LA 710 and also Jack FM 93.1. For DeMarco Farr and for Ricky Hollywood, I'm JB Long, Rams and Saints, under the lights in prime time in week 16. Enjoy. All right. Good stuff, Bane. There you go. Thank you.